<clears throat> On a more serious note, before we turn to our tribute speaker, I'd like to take a moment to recognize all of those who have given their lives while carrying out our mission of international development. We hold a special place in our hearts for all the recent suffering in Haiti, and we allow the many organizations and people in this room that are actively working to address that dire situation. It is now my pleasure to briefly introduce our tribute speaker, Dr. Rajiv Shah, USAID Administrator. Administrator Shah today celebrates his third week in the position. And I'm sure he is saying what a three weeks it has been. Given all that Administrator Shaw has been doing to coordinate the government's Haiti relief effort, we are truly honored that he has taken the time to be with us tonight. Administrator Shaw has long been a good friend of Sid Washington and was a prime mover in supporting previous Sid dinners from his former perch at the Gates Foundation. Thank you very much for that support. We have all become acquainted with this remarkable man. He blends many worlds and organizational perspectives. A Master's of Science in Health Economics from Wharton and an MD also from the University of Pennsylvania. Deep expertise and experience across sectors, in particular health and agriculture and very senior posts in government at the U.S. Department of Agriculture in a foundation at Gates and in both the nonprofit and for-profit private sector with health systems analytics and project impact for South Asian Americans. Prior to joining the Obama administration, Dr. Shaw worked at the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Over his seven years there, he served in a variety of leadership roles, including as Director of Global Agricultural Development, Director of Strategic Opportunities, and Deputy Director for the Global Health Program. In these roles, he helped develop and launch the Foundation's Global Development Program, helped create both the Alliance for a Green Revolution in Africa and the International Finance Facility for Immunization an effort that raised more than $5 billion for child immunization. Before coming to USAID, Dr. Shaw served as Undersecretary of Research, Education, and Economics and as Chief Scientist at USDA. This included oversight of four federal agencies and more than 10,000 staff. In short order, he refocused their work around a core set of presidential priorities. Secretary of State Clinton made us aware at Dr. Shaw's swearing-in ceremony of the lengths he will go to attain success. Even flying for one day to the Taj Mahal in India to make sure that his future wife said yes. <clears throat> Secretary Clinton also mentioned that he climbed to the summit of Mount Rainier. That has special resonance for me because I was born and raised in Seattle, and Mount Rainier is a veritable icon for Seattleites. I say that if Dr. Shaw has this kind of vision and stamina, USAID is in very good hands. Without further ado, I pass the podium to Dr. Shaw. Hello. Uh, thank you. That's very, very generous. I, uh, in Seattle, once you move to Seattle, you just look at that mountain all the time, and you kind of have no choice. <laughs> it's not really a... 
a, a testament to my commitment to mountain climbing. Just it's it's sitting there, and and you've got to climb it. Uh, I I wanted to just start by thanking Sid. It's been great to watch and be a part of the Sid community for a number of years. Uh, and it's been amazing to learn that Sid has been around for more than 50 years and, and been involved in this work for such a, a, a significant length of time. Um, thank you, Betsy, for that kind introduction and for your work uh, with the Washington Board. And thank you, Joe uh, Foyer, for your work as the Executive Director. This is a great organization, and it's great to bring together a community of people that have such passion for this work. If there's one thing, I've observed just in the last two months of being welcomed into this community um, is that it very much is a community. It seems like everybody has at some point served at USAID, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, and hopefully many of you will come back. Uh, it, it is, uh, but it is a community that sticks together. It's a community of people who share interests and passions. And perhaps above all, it's a community of people who share a deep, deep, deep commitment to making the world a significantly better place for the least fortunate amongst us. And uh, perhaps no one shares that commitment as, as strongly as our two honorees this evening, and so I'm eager to have the opportunity to uh, speak about each of them. I also want to thank Andrew Natsios, who I just met here a moment ago, uh, mostly for being the one person who told me that the, uh, the thing that you really have to think about in this job is when disaster strikes. Uh, you can be overwhelmed for a while with, uh, with the responsibilities of the Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance and the role that USAID plays in helping to coordinate the response. Uh, so thank you, Andrew. That was very helpful <laughs> and, and, and very timely. Uh, uh, finally, I, I want to just say a special word for Alonzo Fulgham. For, I've had the chance, I've actually known Alonzo because he came out to Seattle when I was at the Gates Foundation, he was part of a group, uh, the HELP Commission, that perhaps many of you were a part of and have worked with. Uh, but I have, I would just note, and he's off in, in London right now on working on Afghanistan and Yemen with Secretary Clinton, uh, but I've been amazed by his personal commitment to this agency. And I've been amazed and I've now understood uh, the pressures on the job that he has performed over the course of the last year. Um, and I know that as a board member of SID, he sends his personal greetings this evening. Um, and I think we owe him just a, a moment of reflection and thanks in that context. I, I'd like to start just by saying a few words about Haiti. I was obviously there a few times in the past few weeks. And this is a community of people and organizations and partners who've played a critical role in a large and comprehensive response to what is likely the most complex disaster we've collectively faced, in part because of the relatively low infrastructure base, but then the fact that the earthquake destroyed some very critical assets like the airport and the port and some of the main roads and, and of course, a tremendous amount of uh, housing that left al almost two million people displaced. Uh, it has been an incredible experience to see this community come together and aggressively be part of a response. And in, I think in many ways it reflects on the core values and the core aspirations that we all hold dear. The, I just want to articulate a few points about the response that I think are perhaps on the top of my mind and, and for which I'm very grateful. The first is, it's important to note that when this happened, we mounted together the largest urban search and rescue effort ever mounted, the most successful in terms of numbers of saves with, with more than 135 lives saved, and, uh, and that the leadership for this came from a few US-based urban search and rescue teams that were the first ones to get down there that established a leadership role in coordinating the efforts of more than 30 international teams. And something I came to learn as this was happening was that the Fairfax, Virginia team that got back home today for the first time in two weeks, in fact, trained the day.